Hi, I'm Lindsay Thompson. I am the Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 instructor with Blue Tent Online. And I've made this video for you so that you can take a look at what a lesson with me looks like, as well as peek into our online Moodle classroom and check out the online resources that we'll be using in and outside of our live sessions. Some of you may already be familiar with Moodle. For those who aren't, this is generally what it looks like. You've got the bulk of the classroom in the center here. This is where the message that I'll post every week will be. It will outline what we'll be covering. And at the very bottom, it will have all of your resources, videos, um, and assignments that you'll need to look at that week. Going up to the top on the right, you'll have your calendar, which will show you what is due and when. Activities, which will just easily take you to any assignment or resource that you might want to see. A link to your grades and um, a list of who is online or has been online recently. I'm still adding things to this, but I think you'll find that Moodle is very user friendly and a great platform to use for an online class like this. If you aren't familiar with Moodle, you will have time at the beginning of the class uh, year to get familiar with it, play around, ask me questions about it. This is going to be a brief introduction to complex numbers and the imaginary unit I. Up until this point, students will have learned that the square root of a negative number has no real solution, and that's kind of where they stop. Uh, mathematicians, in fact, overcame this by creating the term I, which is defined as the square root of negative one. So, before i is introduced, x squared cannot equal negative one. There can't be, there's no real solution for that. But with i, if you square a square root, you just get what's inside. So i squared can equal negative one. So your solution to x squared equals negative one would be i. So the way students would use this is they have the square root of a negative real number c. We're just going to call it c for now. And to put that into the form of a complex number or an imaginary number, they would inside the square root, say, okay, negative C is the same as negative one times C. Well, we learned from algebra one that when you have two items multiplied inside a radical, you can separate them so that they look like negative one, square root of negative one times square root of C we have defined the square root of negative one now as i. So we can now rewrite this as the square root of c times i. So let's practice that in, ex in an example. This has simplified this expression, the square root of negative 32 minus two times the square root of negative two. So the square root of negative 32, we can write as negative one times 32. Write out the rest of the expression, negative two times the square root of negative two, we can rewrite as negative one times two. Okay, so We'll do exactly like we did above, and we'll say the square root of negative one times the square root of 32 minus two times the square root of negative one times the square root of two. 
we can now rewrite our square roots of negative one as i. So square root of 32i minus two square root of two i. Square root of 32 is not all the way simplified. So let's write it out and 32, I look at it and I see 16 times two, which I know I can take the square root of 16. So we'll write it out as 16 times two times I minus two square root of two times I equals square root of 16 is four square root of two I minus two square root of two I. Using um, what we know of subtracting radicals, because I have square root of two minus, we have four square root of two minus two square root of two, and we have I's in both terms, they would be considered like terms, we can combine them. So four minus two is two. So our solution for simplifying the expression is two square root of two i. One of the pieces of technology we'll be using pretty regularly is this calculator emulator. It's based on the TI-84 plus silver edition and um, this is how I will show students how to use their graphing calculator to solve problems that they'll see in this class, in future classes, and on standardized tests. So for instance, say we wanna make a graph, we'll go to our Y equals button. And as you can see over here in the left corner, um, students can see a, a big image of exactly what I press. So if I'm moving too quickly, they can see what, press, what button I press and in what order. So let's say I wanna graph X squared. We'll click our X button squared minus two. And then we go to our graph button Well, that doesn't look like x squared minus two. So let's go to window, x min negative 10, x max 10, x scale one. Whoa, y min and y max look a little weird. Let's go ahead and make those negative 10 and 10. Hit graph again. There we go, that looks more like our graph. Um, or we can say zoom Where is it? There it is. Let's go zoom fit. As you can see on the left hand side over here where my key press history is, I hit the down arrow nine times to get to my zoom fit. Hit enter. That still doesn't look right. So I can adjust my window and say, I don't want, I want a little bit of space between the minimum of the graph and the edge of the window right here. So let's make that negative four instead. And then we make the max 14. There we go. That looks better. All right, so that is the graphing, calcula graphing calculator emulator. There we go. And um, this will be similar to most calculators students already have if they don't have the TI-84. And um, if they have a graphing calculator that's extremely different, then I can work with them and show them how to use their specific graphic calculator. But this is the one I'll be using in class.
So this is another resource we'll be using fairly frequently in class. Uh, it's a website called GeoGebra, and we'll use it to represent, graph, and model various concepts that we'll be learning about in Algebra 2. For instance, this is the concept that students should have already learned about, but let's say we are given two equations. The first one is x squared plus 2x minus 3. So that's equation 1. Now let's say equation 2 is x plus 5. So we can see where each of the graphs or each of the uh, equations intersect. So um, the line x plus 5 intersects the x-axis down here, it intersects the parabola here, intersects the y-axis here, and then again intersects the parabola there. So what we can do is click on these three dots and say special points. And we can do that for both of them. So for instance, A is where the parabola intersects with the x-axis and that's negative three, zero. B is at one, zero. C is the vertex of the parabola and that's at negative one, negative four. D intersects with the y-axis at um, negative three, et cetera. So we can also go here and say, okay, we wanna know where these two intersect. So we have the line and we have the parabola. And that gives us G and H, which going back to our calculator tab over here, tells us they intersect at negative three point three seven and one point six three and that's point G and then point H is two point three seven and seven point three seven so that's H right there so plenty of uses um, they can use it for geometric concepts uh, you can use it for calculus so we can find the tangent line um, so say we want to find the tangent line at point H on the parabola and it draws this line right here. Then say I want to know the slope of that line. Um, I can just go to slope, select the line, and the slope is 6.74. So lots of different uses for this and students will get familiar using it in class.